Last word, Mr. Chairman. The gentleman from Minnesota is recognized for five minutes. Mr. Chairman, I tell you what's as plain as the nose on your face. What's as plain as the nose on your face is that the Republicans are getting rid of a plan for long-term care without offering any alternative plan in its place. They're just stripping what's there without saying, here's what we're going to do. But I have a memory, Mr. Chairman, and what I remember is that between, but for long stretches of time in the last decade, Republicans had both houses and the presidency didn't do anything on health care other than do a big giveaway to big pharma. When the Democrats get in, we do a plan. We pass the Affordable Care Act. Does it need tinkering? Probably so, like all bills do. But instead of trying to work with us to do something good for the American people, Republicans say we're just going to strip the Democratic plan for long-term care. And this is too bad, because it seems to me that long-term care, Mr. Mr. Speaker, is a legitimate issue for us to work together on. But we're not working together. One side passes a bill, the other side just tries to get rid of it. I think that it's high time we start trying to work together, but we don't have a cooperative partner. Washington Republicans are proven once again that they would rather try to embarrass President Obama than help America's seniors. Last year, Republicans' first order of business was to eliminate the Medicare guarantee for America's seniors. This year, it's the same old story, Mr. Speaker. No health care, no Medicare, no long-term care for millions of Americans. Instead of a plan to create jobs or to extend middle-class tax cuts, or to address unemployment insurance assistance, or to fix Medicare physician pay rate, Republicans are wasting time would on the, divisive the gentleman and pointless yield, bills. Would the gentleman yield to me for just a brief moment? I do respect the gentleman's desire to have me yield, but I must very, very respectfully decline because I have limited time. But if they I have won't any time, yield, won't yield to let me mention about the uh, long-term care partnership program. The gentleman, program the gentleman from Georgia will suspend. Under President Bush, just covered 280. The gentleman from Georgia. Yield. The gentleman from Georgia will suspend. The gentleman from Minnesota. Thank you, has thank you, Mr. Speaker. And if I have any extra time, I'd be happy to yield to the gentleman. But I'll, it'll have to be where I'm done. Today, we could be dealing with the real issue, fixing the long-term care crisis, and I'm sure that all the everyone in this whole body, Republican and Democrat ought to be concerned about it because all of us, no matter what our ideological beliefs may be, have people who need long-term care. So we got to be about this business. You know what, Mr. Speaker, 10 million Americans currently need long-term care, and the problem is only getting worse. A number of Americans, 62 years and older, is 20 percent higher than it was 10 years ago. Long-term care is a huge burden on families. An estimated 62 million, let me say that one more time, Mr. Speaker, 62 million unpaid family caregivers provided care valued at $450 billion in 2009, more than the total spending in Medicare that year. But Republicans are offering no solutions to the long-term care crisis. They may say, they can say anything they want, but they're not coming here with a bill that we can debate. They're just attacking what has already been done, which is so easy to do. Way better to be a critic than to be someone who produces solutions. And so, Mr. Speaker, I want to tell you a little bit about somebody in my district. Mary. Mary. My, uh, it says, here's what Mary says. My mother is 90 and seriously ill and now in a nursing home. Her bill is over 6500 a month, Mr. Speaker. And Mary goes on to say that she will soon run out of money, referring to her mom. Why do people have to become indigent? before they receive help? That's a good question, I think. That's a question warranting our attention. But our Republican friends have no plan to protect families like Mary's. They're not here with a plan. They just want to strip and rip and take down what Democrats have already done. And people are in need of help. So, Mr. Speaker, repealing the Class Act will not help Mary's family. We need to make the Class, class Act program stronger, not get rid of it. We need to mend it, not end it. We need to improve it. And that's why 56 national groups wrote to Congress saying, please don't repeal the Class Act, including AARP, Mr. Speaker, SEIU, and the National Council on Aging, people who really know what they're talking about when it comes to long-term care. And so I urge our Republican friends on both sides of the aisle 
to come together with us to make a strong long-term program for seniors rather than just tearing down and stripping down. It's as plain as the nose on your face, Mr. Speaker. Americans need long-term care, and I 